Hello there, welcome to Movies Are Real for the month of 2K19 January, baby! I'm here with Ryan Lance. Ryan, how are you doing? Low energy, but love <laughs> yeah. being here. Am I right? Yeah. You know, Carrie, how are you doing? Uh, also low energy, but I'm so pumped for the Super Bowl tomorrow. Am I right, boys? Woo! Patriots! Uh, <laughs> Tom Brady! Tom Brady! Uh, <laughs> we don't care about Deflate Gate. Uh huh. I don't know what that ah, is. What was the dumb name? <laughs> That's when he deflated the balls, Ryan! Why would. What? Uh, what? <laughs> this is a monthly movies podcast where we like gather basketballs? and discuss the movies of the month prior. And not sports, so don't you worry. No. But the sports uh, podcast is coming soon. Football Tom? What was the dumb nickname they gave Tom? I don't remember. Uh, football Tom should be the name of our podcast. Tom. I can only can say Tom, Big Dick baby. Nick, but that was, from, that was from last year from the Eagles. Flat. Or was it the ball Jets? It was the Jets. Ball. I don't know. Clearly, I don't know anything. I know a lot flat about football. Flat Earth, flat balls. Now, do we what? think another Cloverfield movie is going to come out tomorrow? Yeah, that's oh, a great uh, point. That is what I'm looking forward to. You <laughs> should put that in the upcoming, huh? Cloverfield, maybe? <laughs> whatever Cloverfield shit. Actually, it's probably whatever dumb Netflix thing does, because they'll probably do something. They'll probably. definitely do dumb Cause that, bullshit. Because that blew that, up. Yeah, that was... Crazy. That was like a big high followed by an immediate low. <laughs> like mm-hmm. an incredible low, man. But, anyway. and speaking of an incredible low, boy, it's been a dry month for, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like it, it feels like, like, I feel like there was a pattern maybe like 2016, 2017, where it seemed like, um, kind, kind of like how even video games are at this point, Ryan, like, mm-hmm. we're at a point where like, you can release a movie anytime. Like, yeah. it felt that way. Uh, where, like, it used to be, like, the beginning months were, like, sort of a dumping ground for, like, hey, here's a fucking shitty horror movie. Um, and then, but then we had, like, stuff like Captain America, uh, I think Captain America 2 came out pretty early. Or maybe it I think out, Civil it War. It came out in April. I think it was Civil War. Yeah, it came out, like, March, no? Yeah, Civil War came out in March. Yeah. And then Black Panther came out in February. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think last, last year we were at the beginning of the year, and we're like, yeah, there's not jack had, shit coming out. Power Rangers? No, that was the year before. Oh man. <laughs> um... Man, last year sucked. Power Rangers not on a list of, of, uh, of films nominated for the upcoming Best uh, Of. Unfortunately, not. <laughs> it was the most, Point, I one argue... of the most nominated ones yeah. last year. Point being, we only have three movies on this list, uh, but we will be preparing and getting ready for our Best Of 2018 as the Oscars are upon us. And, you know, it's great to, after the pre-show, after they warm up the crowd, that we can come in with actual expertise <laughs> in movie opinions and movie taste uh, to say the definitive list of the best films of 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, we're here for January. Fucking... I can't even remember a single that was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, for, 20, for the, like, Oscars? For Oscars, yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Nice. Well, that doesn't count. Green that Book, A Star is Born... Roma, I believe. No, Roma, I believe, is on there, yeah. I think I'm missing I, one. I can't believe Vice made Oh, didn't there. Black Panther get nominated? Yeah, Black yeah, Panther. Oh, yeah, Black Panther is best move, one of the best movies of 2018. How do you feel about that, Carrie? I mean, I it's a cool movie. I don't think it's that... I don't I think the more much, time has gone, I like it less. Especially yeah. after Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, that's very uh, true. Which set, yeah. like, a really high bar. It set a very um, high bar. So yeah, I don't know, like, because they definitely, like, the Academy, they they added some new people into the Academy, uh, and I don't know if it just feels like, I, I don't want to, like, uh, the, the best picture category this year feels, not to sound like a snob, but say, since, since they got rid of that popular movie category that they were pondering doing, it, it feels, feels like, like the pop the, the, they merged merge. yeah. into the best picture. They're like, well, we don't have anywhere to put these now, so. Best looking visual and best looking artistic, just put it at best mm. looking. Um, anyways. Uh, not to denigrate the quality of, well, actually, I, I'm still shocked Vice made it on there. I haven't seen Vice. Did you see Vice? I think, I think Vice is one of them, right? Vice it is, but I'm yeah. shocked it made no, it No, I haven't seen that. And Bohemian bad. Rhapsody, which is... Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and Green Book, but I haven't seen Green Book, but yeah. I've heard that it's bad. Anyways, we don't have a lot to talk about, but we have to talk about it because it is our duty. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan. We made a pledge to you, the viewer. <laughs> Remember when M. Night made the visit and we were like man i can't wait until everything he's got coming up and then he made split and then he's like i got you know that fucking samuel jackson movie i made like forever ago he's back baby and it's a cinematic <laughs> universe uh-huh. <sighs> and i didn't care then and i don't so care who saw glass i didn't see i it. saw it only carrie it was oh i thought hard. you saw it no i did oh, not because you were an ass ryan was boycotting ryan, ryan put I a was- 
note here. It puts some italics that says uh, glass with the emphasis on ass. It does. That's how I feel <laughs> about it. That's how he really feels <laughs> that's about that. That's how I feel about a movie I have not seen and never plan on seeing. <laughs> ass. Ass. So, Carrie... Uh, What's be, the story? What's going on with I'm, this Mr. I'm Glass? Gonna be compl- it, it's such a strange... So, before we even start, it's really weird, because this feels like a movie made for a generation, like, at least a, several years older than us, Um, but Split was marketed as a movie for everyone, yeah. and now this is like, oh, Every, remember... Everyone's gonna love Split. It's true. <laughs> uh, it's like Joseph Ferris up on the Game Awards, like, everyone's gonna fucking love this game. <laughs> this fucking movie, man, I'm telling you, it's fucking genius. If you walk out of the movie theater and you're like, your movie was shit, I'd be like, no, it's not. It's genius. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Unbreakable but, came out 2000. Yes. Split 2016. Glass 28. Not marketed as a movie. Not marketed. Sorry. Yeah, not marketed as a movie. Like, it's in this universe. And, like, and because of that, I feel like there was probably a lot of people in that audience, like, when the reveal happens, they're like, Wait, what? what? <laughs> yeah. And then you have people that like our me. friend Greg was like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm, it's, a, it's a weird product. And I'm not yeah. sure. Who, yeah. Um, uh, uh, so in order to watch this, I went back and I watched Unbreakable. And I really, I didn't love Unbreakable, but I thoroughly enjoyed Unbreakable, which surprised me. Like that and The Sixth Sense were like his big tickets. Sure. And, uh... So I didn't rewatch Split. I kind of wanted to, but I also didn't want to at all. <laughs> but, <laughs> I felt obligated, but I also was like, eh, fuck it. <laughs> but, uh, so it, it's an interesting movie for me, Unbreakable and Glass together. And I just like the whole concept now that I've sat with it of him sneaking in this movie into his franchise, into a surprise franchise that he wanted to build. I think that that's cool and that's a unique way to do it. At least I've never seen it done like that before. But uh, the whole concept of Unbreakable and Split and Glass of it being a more, like, a weird, gritty approach to a superhero movie, I thought that was interesting. And I enjoyed that just from a a perspective of someone who is bored of Marvel movies. (laughs) So, but basically in, in Unbreakable, it sets up that Bruce Willis is super, he... He can't remember ever being sick, and he survives this train crash where every other person on board dies, and it's like he's not even injured. So then Samuel L. Jackson is this character who has a comic book store, and he's like, he says that comic books are like archives of people seeing superhumans and uh, like keeping track of them. And but so then he finds Bruce Willis, and he's like, I think you're a comic book hero. And then at the end of Unbreakable, it sets up that actually Mr. Glass will... Oh, and uh, Samuel L. Jackson has this uh, bone deficiency thing where his bones are super easily breakable. So they create this dichotomy, become super superhero and super villain by the end of Unbreakable. I won't spoil Unbreakable here, but you find out that Samuel L. Jackson is actually the villain. Oh, whoa. I know. I know you're surprised. That's the twist. Wow. And then... So after Split, you know. Yeah, and then Split sets sets up uh, Kevin as the. That's his name. Kevin Wendell Crumb, mm. silliest name ever. Mm. But so in Glass, they're all just kind of moved on with their lives, and uh, James McAvoy is still kidnapping girls and trying to summon the Beast. And uh, even some, post- habits, some <laughs> habits just can't and, die. Yeah, you know what and, I mean? uh, and uh. Bruce Willis and his son, and it's the same, the the actor is the same as the one who was the child in the first movie, which was kind of fun, but uh, they have a security supply store, and he, like, goes around still catching bad guys, because he has this this, uh, psychic type of thing where he can bump into people, and he sees a flash of a bad thing that they've done, so then he can find them, and he tries to get kevin and then they get apprehended by the police after this whole big fight scene (laughs) james mcavoy throws a big table at a cheerleader (laughs) it made me laugh but uh so then they end up in the psych ward with 
Sarah Paulson. Uh, with Sarah Paulson and uh, Samuel L. Jackson is already there uh, when they get there. And she specializes in people who have the delusion that they are, they are superheroes. Mm. So, yeah. It does some interesting stuff as far as trying to go against what you would expect from a superhero movie, which I enjoyed. But I think it also thinks that it's what it's doing is cooler than what it is. If that makes any sense, like I could tell that M Night is like. Do you think I'm like this is it actually, yeah. man? Well, and for I didn't have this feeling uh, because I only just watched Unbreakable for the first time, but I've heard I've heard a lot of people saying that the ending for these quote beloved characters is very unceremonious and not fulfilling. But I don't know. It's an right, interesting so. movie. I liked it more than I thought I would. I expected to hate it. Is it and better it than Split? I liked it better than Split, but I haven't rewatched Split. And it helps that think... it's not a complete focus on what's his face. Yeah, but James McAvoy fucking owns this movie, though. He's so good. I, it's just there's scenes of him switching from personality through personality, and it's really good. He's just acting the entire movie. No breaks. <laughs> but, yeah. but it's kind of stupid, and a lot of the dialogue is very dumb. It starts off, oh, I forgot about this. It starts, there's a part at the beginning where there's these kids who are trying to, they're like pranking people on the street and they Superman punch this guy and knock him over and then Bruce Willis traces them back to their house and uh, the guy is like, I'm going to salt bay your ass. And oh then it boy. cuts to Bruce Willis and his son and he's like, what does that mean? And the son's like, oh, it's this chef on the internet who prepares meat and seasons it in, a, in an elaborate way. And then it, they go move on. And then they go back and they keep talking about Salt Bay for like five minutes. Mm. And I was like, M. Night, stop. Oh, and there's also, uh, I don't remember what M. Night's cameo fully was in Split. He was like the assistant to the therapist or whatever. But he had a cam he had a cameo in Unbreakable where he was at the baseball stadium where Bruce Willis worked and Bruce Willis was like, You're a drug dealer, get out of here. And M. Knight was like, No, I'm not. And then in glass, uh, M. Knight comes into the into the security store and he sees Bruce Willis and he's like, Did you used to work at the baseball stadium? And he's like I used to be into a lot of bad stuff, but I really got my life turned around. And he's there. He's on screen for far too long. Just talking about this character that no one would have remembered. Oh, let's see, unless you recently but, watched Unbreakable. Like yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, but yeah, so. Doesn't but, have a definitive end. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's good. Because I don't want any more of this. Uh, well, well. Oh, well. The character... Do you care if I spoil it? I know, I I know the ending because I. Oh, I, I, oh yeah, Ryan told me he yeah. watched. He listened to a podcast about it, but. Uh, I'll just look it up. Okay. If I'm interested, or I might watch Glass. Actually, I'm not completely opposed it's to the concept. It's not of like Glass. A, a great movie, but it's I just enjoyed like I, it more than I thought. It's just I would. like I said. It feels like such a demographic thing. Like, I was so young when that fucking movie came out, sure. and it's like, I have no frame of reference or yeah. like yeah mm -hmm. for that and. Honestly, I, I kind of refuse to believe that the people really that fucking horny for Unbreakable, like, man, if he got to finish the story. <laughs> There's a lot of people who say that it's his best movie, but... I've heard that, yeah. but I haven't heard, like, man, if he could do another one of those. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I haven't heard of that, like, the wanting for him to come back to that material. Sure. Um, but it's nice that, like, he was, like, he realized, like, I may not get another comeback, Yeah. <laughs> so if I want to do this, I'll, let's just do it now. Yeah. Um, I would just love a, a low-budget new horror movie by him, honestly, because yeah. I, I was reflecting recently on how good The Visit was. Man, that movie was fucking yeah. great. Well, this was pretty low-budget, too. Like, not crazy low, like I imagine Split was. Sure, but probably like $60 like, it's, million it's, or something. It's low-budget enough where when they're talking about this final battle scene that they're going to have throughout the whole movie, it's like, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> it's like, if you go in knowing that it's low-budget, but... I don't know. I thought it was more interesting than okay. I expected it to be. Mm, okay. Not as ass as one might oh. think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, so, just walk all over my bit there. I feel like <laughs> uh, people who listen to this podcast may not know the fascination with the upcoming actor that y'all have. Upcoming? Uh, he's me. here and he's inside all of us. <laughs> Only because I don't think we've seen a lot of films as a group with one uh, Mads Mikkelsen. No. 
Wait, he was in Rogue, Doc- he's in Rogue One and Doctor Strange. Yes. Uh, I guess you're right then. Never mind. He's, he hasn't had a all about him, him. movie yeah. come out recently. That being said, we're here to talk about Polar, uh, which Netflix fucking film. Netflix film. So like again, we didn't know jack shit about this ba- until based on a comic book by Dark Horse I've never heard of before. Great, those are yep. all great, great, great. Basically, Mads, 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 my dad's Mickelson. <laughs> uh, he is this. He's like two weeks from retirement. This. <laughs> Like I'm completely serious. I love this movie. He's two weeks from <laughs> retirement in this like assassin agency, mm-hmm. basically, and he's been putting away money. They have this program where you put away payments, and when you retire, basically like a, reti- a your retirement, retirement plan, plan. Yeah. yeah. And then, so the company owes him eight million dollars when he retires, and they have a policy but... that they have to retire at fifty. But the company is losing a lot of money. And so, the CEO, they, so the CEO who is like, how would you describe this guy? Because he, he is, feels like... He's it, the guy who played Tweedledee and Tweedledum in the live action Alice in Wonderland mm-hmm. movie. Because he's bald he's, and round. Yeah, like he feels like a comic book character. He was also in a Bridesmaids. But, but in a not Rebel, very like comic book Rebel Wilson's world. Roommate or it's very weird. Oh, But okay. basically... Um, he decides, like, hey, we're losing money, so now we have these agents who are about to retire now, so how about right before they hit 50, we kill them so that way we just get all that money from their retirement the money account. Comes back to and us. that way I can buy more drugs and hookers. Or bas- What does yeah. he do with the money? I don't know. He slaps a lot of ass, so I assume he buys hookers. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't remember. No, because he was dating that one Asian assassin lady. Oh, that's true. Was another assassin? I think there was another there, assassin lady was, was like in a strip board club. meeting where they were talking about how he's losing money, mm-hmm. and so I think he just needed a to board pay back that, his debts or something. Yeah, <laughs> from the drugs and hookers. So, yeah. what, so is this movie <laughs> oh, then trying to kill Mads Mikkelsen? Yeah. Yes. He's basically hiding out, and uh, there's this group of like younger, five? yeah, five or so younger assassin team that is tracking him down. They're, they're, they're him. the A team. They, they're they, the A team. They're the A team. Most convoluted way but of like also, shady business. But also, Mads Mickelson is at his log cabin, and he lives across the lake from Vanessa Hudgens, mm-hmm. and him and Vanessa Hudgens start to become friends. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait. So wait, it's, I'm so, glad it doesn't go t- to like romantic interest because no. like I love Mads. I would I I would marry him. Yeah. But I don't want to see him marry Vanessa Hudgens. He's like. 20 still was in my mind. Was he in the cabin, like, hiding out? Or? No, that's just where he lives. That was, like, his uh, retirement home. The best... The, my favorite parts of this movie are um, when the assassin group is, like, going around the world. Because basically they find out, like, okay, he has these three homes. Oh, yeah, they shake down his, like, accountant or whoever mm-hmm. and get the file on him. And they, and they, they have these three, three homes, three so they're going places. across the world trying to find which is his home. And they're running all these weird. The people they run into <laughs> they end are up in all these eccentric characters' yeah. houses. It's really funny. like weird Porto guy, um, big fat recliner man. Exactly. <laughs> um, I think just like a bunch of kids doing drugs. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but while all that has happened, Mads Mikkelsen, who is this like former assassin who, with all this PTSD, is just trying to live a normal life. He's buying mac and cheese. He's going to Redbox. He's just he does go shopping. To Redbox a lot. He goes to Red. <laughs> George, I gotta emphasize to you how much this motherfucker goes to Redbox. It's great. <laughs> it's so funny. And he's just living a nor- the best seed in all of 2019. It cannot- calling it now. I'm calling it now. Uh, basically, Vanessa Hudgens is like, you know, you're you're very wise for because she he tells her that he would travel the world in this like, um. <laughs> Oh, uh, across says, the world, he like he says that he is a funeral yeah. worker or something, and but he uh, travels he across owns a mortuary, the mortuary, and his business is that when people travel abroad and die in foreign countries, he goes and collects them and brings them back. Mm-hmm. So he goes to, so she has him like go to these like six year old kids. <laughs> She's like, you should speak at the. One of my favorite school. things is like, there's so many times in this movie where Matt, where someone's like, hey, you should just use like. I would do that. Then he immediately does it. <laughs> like it is stirred. Like I've seen. I've I've looked in people's eyes as they're dying. <laughs> he demonstrates how to quickly and effectively assassinate someone with his big scary knife. On He's like, all right. So this blade is good on this child. This blade is good for cutting, but not for 
Stabbing. Stabbing. <laughs> All the kids are like, there it is. That's good. <laughs> this movie would be five out of five if it was just the assassins <laughs> going across the world not being able to find him and him just like living his weird life, <laughs> buying mac and cheese, teaching kids to be weird. Ah. Uh. I feel like this movie... And then it becomes a weird action slash softcore yeah, porno. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like this movie only works so well for me and uh, Ryan as well because we're in love with Mads Mikkelsen. Like, he's my fav- one of my favorite actors ever, so seeing him being a goofy weirdo assassin man is just very... It's very nice It's nice seeing me. him, like, being the lead role. I can't... Yeah. Like, he even, in... even in Hannibal, which you've shown me a few episodes oh, I of... I love Hannibal so He's much. not... He he's he, used he's, sparingly in that yeah. show. Will Graham like he's is more definitely he's the more of like the idea show. behind the show mm-hmm. and not like the central focus. No. And he I and in, like I haven't finished it, but I assume like he becomes more involved towards the yeah. end. Yeah. Uh, he was in. He's done a couple movies where he's more of the lead. He was in The Hunt, which is a Danish I've, movie. I've been meaning it's to watch so that for a while. Good. It's so good. And he was in Valhalla Rising. Mm-hmm. And the, that movie is long mm-hmm. and kind of boring. I fell asleep. But <laughs> is there a reason why this movie's called Polar? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> his cabin is in a cold oh, place. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like Utah. <laughs> yeah, it's just Utah. Not... <laughs> it's just a small town in Utah. Or Montana. Yeah, Montana. <laughs> Utah. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Never mind. It's all the same. <laughs> How's Vanessa Hudgens? She's trying her best. <laughs> okay. Why did I I feel like I saw her in something recently and I can't remember what. She was a guest judge on RuPaul's Drag Race one episode, mm. and she said, "Yeah, that's probably what you're thinking <laughs> this of." Is, this is this was the best moment ever. You could hear the collective eye roll from the entire audience of RuPaul's Drag Race when she was like, "I'm so into voguing right now," and everyone was like, "Stop!" It was so funny. That sounds like it would not play well regardless of the context, like <laughs> any time. No, no, regardless of who's saying it. Was it. So how's the action in this movie? Does it look good? Does it look okay? Yeah. It's fine. This movie is Sounds very... like it's just fine. It's elevated because of Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. This movie's very saturated. Like, when you're watching yeah. it, the colors are sickly bright. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, not in a good way most of the time. It's like a little just iffy. Crank that but... slide yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is what the kids like. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, like a crazy Instagram filter. Yeah, uh, that's how I would describe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like it, it uses like that color to like try to be more comic booky, and like I, yeah. I, I, I understand like the desire to do that. They do that with like a lot of graphics too, especially early on, which is very like, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't like it early on. Like the stylized font, I hate, I hate that font. Oh, and they use it yeah. a lot. I don't with know. It's like weird glitchy thing. It's yeah. weird. Mm. I kind of uh, like that, but it's also very like gratuitous and sex. Like, yeah. That's like not a bad. Lot. But you said softcore. Yeah, it's so, it's it's, not. it's it's there's <laughs> no. it's Ryan. There's a lot. <laughs> He's throwing her up on the walls and on the furniture, yeah. fucking her all over the room. But not Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> no, not no, Vanessa not Vanessa Hudgens. Hudgens. No, it's another girl who's the the assassin group. Their like main their theme strategy is, is they send in they send one in the girl. Hot one. Yeah, and she's just eye candy for like whoever they're killing, and then they fuck for like. 30 minutes <laughs> 30 minutes like all over and then then they set they they have this code where uh she says she, it's blow time yeah and so she starts blowing the guy and then they get a clear shot and they can shoot him yeah huh but i don't get why they need four people around them like just one headshot will do <laughs> like you like her and this whatever that's really all you would really sounds situation. bad actually it's yeah, not, it, it has a yeah, 19 on Metacritic. It might be bad. <laughs> it has a 19 on Metacritic, so... Mm, okay. If you ask anyone else, they'll probably <laughs> tell you it's bad. Yeah, the... Yeah, it's not It's not great. Ryan, I think this movie's bad. Yeah, I think but it's bad. it's great. <laughs> it's great in, like... In similar ways that A Cure for Wellness is great. Yeah! Where it's, like... Some, like so there's so much that's, like, like come fucking on, man. That's... Why would you do that? And they're, like... Oh, yeah. And then the twist at the end is dumb. Yeah, oh yeah, it's really <laughs> dumb and like out of nowhere and unnecessary. <sighs> the company never existed. Uh, no, nope. it's even stupider than that. Yeah, okay. much stupider. Yeah. Well, is there anything else to be said about Polar? Uh, I think we've said more about Polar than any people <laughs> have ever said. Or probably ever will say. But you know what? I'm called it. Best of 2019. Hell yeah. All right, Hell I'm yeah. writing it on the board. Number one. Number one. <laughs> we should, we uh, should put up a whiteboard. High bar set. 
Um, yeah, Polar. A bar now. has certainly been set. <laughs> Best movie 2019 uh, so far. Of the two 2019 movies I've seen. Top two move 22 movies. Yeah, top exactly. two movies of 2019. Uh, Glass and Polar. Great, yep, great yep, year. Yep, great yep. year for film. <laughs> yep. um, so, George, tell me about Shoplifters. Yeah, this is, this is I don't like, know if it's going to make like the list, this, guys. This, but this, but <laughs> Tell us about an actual good movie. Uh, so, yeah. So this <laughs> you know is, what? Carrie, say it out loud. I don't want to hear about this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is uh, Shoplifters. It is a Japanese film. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Originally, going in, I thought it was Chinese, but no, it is Japanese. It seems like this is sort of a family who were like maybe that they, they clearly don't have the most money uh, and they are not in the best life situation. Uh, but as the movie goes on, you realize that these aren't people who are directly like related. I think believe two of them are, but mostly it's like. It seems like it's the family they got. Mm -hmm. um, but the the real thing of the movie is that they it's like the sort of the father figure and the, the youngest, who's like a, a boy. Uh, again, not direct. You'll find this out later. Um, but they see that there's a little girl who is like just hanging out, like sort of like outside of her house, sort of like on the porch. Uh, and you can hear like the parents sort of like arguing, maybe some domestic abuse happening. Uh, and she's also, like, it's really cold and she seems hungry. So they give her some food and then they realize, well, we should probably, what if we just took her in for the night? Uh, and they do that and they just kind of become attached. Uh, and really the, uh, really the whole movie is a sort of a slice of life. Like these people, uh, just trying to make ends and like them teaching her like the tricks of the trade. Like, oh, here's how you do it. You got to distract them. You're like, oh, but, uh, um, and then sort of uh, stuff like unravels. You find out more about the the, the father figure and the mother figure, uh, like what is actually happening here. And it's a little confusing, like because you realize that there are people who are sort of being played the whole time. Pretty much, like the whole movie is about like it's not really as all fun time as it seems. Uh, there's actually like the the father figure and the the per, like I forget who what's her name, but. But yeah, there is a father figure and a mother figure, and they have a goal why they're hanging out here and why they're hanging out with like the, the specific person in the group. Uh, and then like the movie ends with sort of them like falling up, like just like going to the winds. One of them getting arrested. Um, yeah, it's it's weird. Like because when I lay it out, like it's not that complicated of a story. It really is just relationship based, like what uh, the interactions between these characters and what's going on uh, sort of uh, outside because they're searching for this little girl. Like the actual parents that they don't actually give a shit, but they're creating a huge media circus. of like, we got to find the girl. Oh my God. I miss my daughter so much. Um, and so it's like, Oh, we got to hide her and all this stuff. Um, yeah. I think it didn't tear me apart as it tear tore a lot of people apart. Like I, I read like a lot of people like, Oh man, it was so emotional. Um, it's really well done. I think it has super strong moments, certainly uh, great act, like performances. Um, but I think there are definitely moments in that movie that were meant to be like tug at your heartstrings that didn't do it for me. Uh, but I just, just this is just super well done. Uh, it's super bittersweet. Um, so night like it doesn't end on a huge punctuation point. Like like it doesn't end on like an exclamation point. It just sort of like ends, and that makes it a little bit more bittersweet. It's like oh like. That's it, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's really well done. Uh, I think if you want a movie, not it has moments of feel goodness in it, but it's just very real. Like it, it like from the beginning, it seems like from the pitch, it is going to be sort of like a Disney, like happy ending. Like, oh, it's not about like, it's not about the family you are born with. It's about the family you choose. And it's sort of like that, but also doesn't have the happiest of endings um yeah it's it's really 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 good um when i was first seeing stuff for this film it had like a almost like documentary kind of feel to it like yeah. it felt it felt very like real that might be the way like, it's the camera it's shot the way it's yeah. shot i mean i i didn't know much going in it's a saw, tv like, a movie i hear it's a tv movie oh picture. really yeah huh. uh, like in japan it's a tv movie that's got like wide distribution here um but yeah yeah that's that movie did you Obviously, I think this isn't nominated for anything because it's it's had some buzz during award uh, season. But I don't know if it's one of those movies that got snubbed. I think it was at the Golden Globes, maybe. I think it was one of the foreign stuff at the Golden Globe that don't 
I don't remember anything about it. It's probably just like in that little like foreign film bin. Yeah. Yeah. Here's where you hang out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. Here's where all the here's where all the nerds watch. Who cares about these movies? Why yeah. don't they speak American, huh? Yeah. This is Americo. <laughs> they speak the Americano. But yeah, it's just a good movie. Uh, I don't feel extremely passionate about it. Like it has really good m- notes, but yeah, it's just really well done. Um, and with that, that's all we got for you in January, folks. Uh. Alita Battle Angel. Is that what's the first thing on this list? No, the first one I had on the list was a movie that I've actually seen. I'm going to talk about real briefly. Oh, gosh. Vel- Velvet Buzzsaw. Oh, is this the movie this with... Was, um, this is Jake Gyllenhaal. You say Nightcrawler guy. Na- it, also director of Nightcrawler, writer and director of Nightcrawler. It's this contemporary horror comedy taking place in like the high art world. Basically, the, the main premise is one of the um, art, I don't know all the terms for this stuff, one of the main like art dealers who works with Jake Gyllenhaal discovers these paintings that have this mysterious like, who made these? What's going on with these? They're like incredible works of art and they start auctioning them off and some strange stuff kind of happens. It's very much a commentary on like the art world which is very cool, interesting. Is Jake Gyllenhaal playing like a straight up, like serious character in this movie, or more of a character? He's playing like a typical... like with the name Velvet Buzzsaw. Like that's, that's not sounds... his name. Well, like the movie, <laughs> but that's yeah. sa- that doesn't sound like straight faced. Like, yeah. like that sounds like a little like over the top. Oh maybe. no, no, no! There's there's a yeah. scene where one of the, one of the artists in this film is. Um, Oh man, what's his name again? I can't believe. Um, John Malkovich is one of the, ah! is one of the artists, and there's a scene where one of the uh, art dealer people like walks into his home and he like looks at like this pile of trash and he's like, "Oh my god, it's magnificent." He's like, "No, that's just garbage." He's like, "Oh," like it's very much trying to like comment on like art and all that fun stuff, which is really like cool as someone who's not like I have an appreciation for art, but I'm just not super knowledgeable on it. So that aspect, like, I really enjoy. And horror stuff, which comes in play later, I, I really dug all that. My main issue with this movie is it's just very unfocused. There's so ma- there's a lot of characters, and I never really understood, like, the relationship between them. Like, this movie has Jake Gyllenhaal, Rene Russo, Tony Collette, mm. um, Natalie Dyer from Stranger Things. Who is she play? Uh, she's the girl that's not Eleven. The girl who's not eleven. Yeah. Barb's friend. Oh! Yeah. No, yeah, Barb's, Barb's friend. friend. Barb's yeah. friend. Okay, yes. John Malkovich, like I said, and then a few other people who I've seen but I and other stuff, but like Was this very, like a limited release thing or like it it was released at um Sundance. Oh, okay. But it, it it's a Netflix thing oh. going through. Basically like the first half is like set, setting up stuff and then the second half is gets more into like Final Destination s core, and like all of that stuff is very like cool, interesting the way they do it. But I don't know; it just doesn't say a lot at the end for some that's trying to be all high art and mm. interesting. And does it at least it, look cool? It looks very cool. One of the characters' deaths, I love. It's so colorful and weird. Um, how uh, I would say the main female character. Uh, her death is very like colorful and weird and interesting but there's just too many people like doing things and i don't understand it feels like no one's on the same page it's just not focused and i don't know it, it's very interesting I'd ha- i would recommend it for how long is it uh and two, and two, two hours about just two, hours. two hours like no more no less okay I was it's it's... interesting, not groundbreaking. I I am glad I saw it just because it's interesting seeing, you know, just this this art ha- like a truly art house kind of thing where it's just trying to take this these concepts and put a horror spin on it. Very fun, very interesting. Okay, but that's what I was like. memorable. I don't know. See, at least with maybe those... people who were like more into art, they'd be at least with those movies. You get a little out of visual, cool, spooky shit, or it's mm-hmm. very boring and the pace is like too slow it's um it's a toss-up between those two things uh, yeah. okay oh well i was good to hear about jake what's the last thing jake Hall was in that like really uh that 
What was he wasn't in that. No, the, I confused it with Tom. He, uh, he was in that movie with Tilda there. Swinton about the big pigs. Okja. He was in Okja. Oh, I didn't see Okja. It was good. Yeah, I heard. He's also going to be in the new Spider-Man. Mysterio. Oh, he Mysterio. is Mysterio. <laughs> Mysterio. It's Mysterion. Uh, one of our one of our friends, Alex, texted me when she saw the trailer. I was like, "Is that fucking Jake Gyllenhaal?" It's like, "Oh yeah, oh, it's yeah. a weeb role for him." It's a it's yeah. Well, anyways, the first on my list for February, um, Mads Mikkelsen is back, <laughs> back again. And it's been he's so even long. coming and, out of retirement, <laughs> and he's <laughs> even colder in Arctic. <laughs> this see, no, it's not. He, Carrie, what's the is this another, you've, said, you've said you know what this is, uh, right? Is it another action like, movie? Tra- I think it's similar to The Grey. That mo- that's oh, more is of like trapped, like trapped in, in the Arctic. Tick, and yeah. then he fights a wolf. Something like that. Great. This one like, had like a, re- like a, a man small... stranded in the Arctic is finally about to receive his long-awaited rescue. However, after a tragic accident, his opportunity is lost, and he must then decide whether to remain in the re- relative safety of his camp or embark on a deadly trek through the unknown for potential salvation. That sounds all right. With Mads Mikkelsen as the lead, yeah. sure. That sounds all right. <laughs> the reviews on this one are actually positive. That sounds okay. Unlike, <laughs> unlike Polar. What? You could say that it's a polarizing film. <laughs> uh. The Lego Movie 2. The second part. I feel like I'm the it only feels one like of us who's excited it's about this. It's been too long. It, I think they waited too long. Well, not waited. Like The Lego Batman they, movie they, was not necessary. I feel like I, I didn't know that it was coming out Me until either. Like a week ago. I think it's because they try to do those spin-offs first. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what, yeah. The Ninjago have, and the Lego Movie. They had Lego Batman. Batman and Ninjago the same year, and then they're having this. And I feel like people would have like, It feels this. fucking forever. It does, yeah. Especially because the movie sort of has like a Mad Max like bit. Yeah, and it's like yeah, you can tell that they've been working on this for a while, which like is really cool. That uh, you know they they and hey, Mad Max Fury Road, a great film. Yes, yeah, and a great bit. Some it's a good say bit. That. Uh, a fantastic <laughs> film, one of the best of uh, the it's decade. Pretty, it's pretty good, right? It's certainly an opinion people have. Uh, anyways, <laughs> yeah, like it's weird. Like it's not too, especially since I know that um, what what's their names, the the brothers. Uh, uh, brothers, they're, they're uh, Chris two. Lord and yeah. Bill Miller. Yes, I think I, I got those them with the Russo opposite. brothers. Yeah, I probably <laughs> you mixed them up there. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, they're the same person. Yeah, basically. I confused them with the Russo brothers for a second yeah. there. Um, but yeah, it, they're it, riding high off Spider Man, and they escaped the travesty that was the Han Solo movie. That's true. So I'm feeling good about this, even if it doesn't like lead up. It will to look it. cool at the very least. Yeah, it will. Um, I really did not like the Lego Batman movie, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed it, but I remember you not liking it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. It's weird, especially because I think, like, the Lego movie was sort of an unknown, vi- like, an unknown thing like, yeah, going we, in. Yeah, we, like, were showing up for the theater, like, oh, this is going to be stupid. And then we all left, like, oh, my God. So it's, like, what weird. Like, what do you do? Like, do you just yeah. do that again? Or, how, like... how would you one-up, like, that? Exactly. That? Where do you yeah. go? Because uh, for the Lego Batman movies, like, here's a bunch of shitty, like... Batman jokes and like it's just I don't know it's felt... kind of a construction of like the pop culture version of the character sure yes and definitely. I like I definitely. like that stuff that was interesting yes but at the same time like all the jokes didn't land for me yeah I feel like uh, it's, it's, it's Will Ferrell's not in this anymore right I don't remember what happened at the end of Lego Batman uh, the Lego movie well other than the Duplo the, the guys show up at the yeah end of it. like him and him and the <clears> son like like you know what I'm gonna stop being an asshole. And your little uh, sister is gonna play too. Right. So is the like, Duplo a, a big? Because I like that rock, bit. That was rock, a great bit. That was a good bit. Will the Bionicles be in this one? George? That'd be great. <laughs> Remember the Bionicles? That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Let me tell you about the Mountain Nui, baby. Um, that'd be great. Um, what is the Prodigy? The, oh, wait, I think I know. Wait, what is this? Prodigy. Um, it's very similar to another movie. Um, that, that I've seen a trailer for. It has. It's. It has uh, Orange is the New Black main girl. Okay. Uh, and it's something about her son. Um, he's like super smart or something. But then oh, is this like, like the omen looking be, movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but okay. I think he's smart because of demons. 
Mm. Yeah, let me let me look into this real quick. Apparently, there's a musical group called the Prodigy. Oh, Prodigy, yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> that that That's has right, that. 2019. That has ruined what I thought would be a really quick bit. Uh, Miles is a young boy who's shown signs of genius intellect, but also more disturbing and sinister behavior. Okay, this sounds like uh, Sarah. His mother uh, takes him to a therapist and begins to the suspect bin. that he may be influenced Sweet or possessed by. Sounds like it should have come force. out in January. Yeah, it sounds like... Well, <laughs> February 8th is close enough, okay? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It looks fine. I mean, it's weird because... Like, well, let's see. The Burn Bright movie seemed like a lot Does more Does it even have enough energy, enough spice that Carrie are even interested in it? Uh, I've seen a lot of ads for it on Twitter. And... That's usually not a good yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> it might be all right. I don't know. All right, see, so this seems like a complete wash and Carrie's not even. <laughs> All right, George, about. tell me why I should care about Happy Death Day to uh, So here's the thing. Happy Death Day, a great, one of the best horror movies of the year it came out. It's yeah, fantastic. It's good. But I don't know what the fuck you do in the sequel. And I felt it that way. It looks like she's just waking up on the same day again. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. what are you, what, 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 what are you, what are you doing? What, what? No! What no! are you doing? <laughs> What's happening? It's like, like, if, like if, it's straight up like if you got like this movie, big ass saga, and it's like, oh, actually, no, it's not over. Actually, we're just going to keep on going. This is like the Shrek 1.5 of movies. Have any of you seen Shrek 3D? I think that's what it was called here. Uh-uh. So it was, oh, it was a special they played at Universal Studios that they bundled it as a DVD with the DVD release of Shrek 1. Pretty much it was like, as soon as Shrek 1 ends, Lord Farquaad becomes a ghost and steals Princess Fiona. But it's like, I'll be honest, it's not, this sounds like a fever <laughs> dream. Had a this is 100% real. My point being is that the, George, he was Shrek, a ghost, he could have Fiona, and Shrek had to, he had a scene. This, this is 100% real. And like the actual Eddie Murphy was there. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, anyways, what I'm saying is that that was dumb bullshit because it's like, why would you create a story that takes place immediately after the fucking conclusion? I don't know what you want me to, I. Like and also, Happy Death Day had a convoluted, dumb ending, but it, it worked there because yeah. like this movie's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And now they're like they're gonna have to jump like three sharks in this movie. <laughs> so it's like I don't know. I'm gonna watch it. I like Happy Death Day a lot, but I ah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, it's good. Uh, what the heck is Isn't It Romantic? This is a movie where Rebel Wilson like. I was gets, say, is this like uh, that one she song? Gets isn't hit, it ironic? She gets hit in the head. And then she wakes up in a romantic Michael comedy. Wilson, man, I haven't heard that name in a minute. So it's like, it's like a self-aware romantic comedy thing. Great, love it. Do you though? No. Oh, that's no, that's a much better response. <laughs> no, not at all. All I know is this: is I've seen the trend in Rebel was like, I'm in a romantic comedy. Wow! <laughs> and that's it. And then like a bunch of like romantic com, and it's supposed to be like. Like a like she movies, was a girl. Like that, was like a theater girl. movies where people Can like in the car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this doesn't look very good. No. And I'm probably the only one who knew this existed. I saw a poster of it. Uh, anyways, from the creator of Shark Boy and Love a Girl. <laughs> From the creator of Spike Kids 3D. Oh, now you have my From attention. the creator of Shorts comes Alita Battle Angel. Uh, Alita. Battle Angel. Alita colon Battle Angel. A movie that's been in the works apparently for 20 years. That makes what sense. I see this pitch <laughs> yeah. and it looks like it. It's mm-hmm. produced by James Cameron, correct? James Cameron has been working on this since the year 2000. That looks I was 100%. reading something and apparently at 100%. one point he was working on it with Guillermo del Toro. Oh, 100% this looks like it. <laughs> Like they, and the then, script just drafted it. And, like, and he's wanted to make it for years, but you know, since he's making a thousand Avatar movies that no one wants and well, has asked him not what, to make. Has it been a decade since Avatar now? Yeah, 2009. Yeah, it came out. Fuck me. Uh oh. And we're not even. Is the second Avatar movie coming out this year or next um, year? No. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> God, I, I don't think I'm ready for it yet. <laughs> Can we put it off for another 10 I need years? at least a games. year of mentally preparing myself. I haven't died yet, so if you could not release the movie, please. Uh, I really like the it. The fucking heat death hasn't taken us yet. Yes, so. Exactly. Uh-huh. Anyways, this movie looks like hot street trash. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel bad because I, I, I'm sure like the lead actress is probably a big break for her. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure like 
Special I mean, effects wise, it was probably a huge investment, a lot of people's time and energy. Yeah, they certainly but... worked a lot. A lot of people worked on it. Yeah. It doesn't look good. No. Like, like, literally, like my fear on this movie is like the trailers. Oh, Scott, I've, what's his name? Uh... The tra- the trailers have had like all the same scenes. So like, <laughs> I'm afraid that like when you watch the actual like probably three hour movie, like they got some sucker punch vibes from this. movie. Yeah, some sucker punch Please. vibes. Like What's his those, name? those will be like the good special he's effects, German. and then Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz, yes, yes. I do like Christoph Waltz. But do you like him enough to suffer through this? My favorite thing about Christoph Waltz and Alita Battle Angel is that Christoph Waltz came to the Game Awards to promote this movie, mm-hmm. as well as the star of Alita Battle Angel, which you can't catch her name right now, but I'm sure she's wonderful. Um, she's in Bird Box. Yes, you're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my favorite thing is like he did a hover hand on her. When they went up to like present an award, like he was yeah. gonna like yeah, and he's like oh yay. I was like I'm like you ain't gonna I, I gotta get that paycheck baby. You ain't gonna catch me. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, uh, are we gonna watch Little Battle Angel? We should probably watch Little Battle Angel, right? I feel sick. Or- <laughs> I'm sorry. I think this is the thing we gotta do. Uh, this like- comes up. I love how this comes out on Valentine's Day. Oh hell! Wow. I, I I hope a lot of people. Break up because of this movie. <laughs> like that was worse. My life. See what's gonna happen is like, so they're, they're like they're gonna be like, oh man, that was so goddamn cool, and they're gonna be like dedicated for the rest of the relationship to Alita Battle Angel as a pinpoint of their relationship. <laughs> um, that's what's gonna happen. Oh my, you, you're making me more sick, George. <laughs> Just thinking about. They're this. gonna get each other like fucking Alita Battle Angel Funko Pops that were like fifty percent off oh, because oh, I'm gonna throw up. Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, How to Train Your Dragon. I thought this was already out. The, the, the Hidden World. Um, uh, this is like, like third like, or fourth? Like press screens already happened apparently. Okay, that's it why. May, I... It might have come out overseas actually. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's why maybe I'm thinking about it. Um, I never saw the first one. I saw the second one. I thought it was fine. I don't think I. This I is this is a franchise I've, I've heard is very good. And I have not caught because I don't trust DreamWorks. It's better than be yes. Good. It's it's fine. It's I've, good. I've seen both of them. I do not remember. Same here. That I remember at the time being like that was fine. That was cool. Yeah. But I can't remember. <laughs> they're Scottish. Because like, they're, they're, this is like considered their like Pixar quality like fucking. This uh, is it. This, this is the one. If you could we're, we're change s- your fate. <laughs> Uh, Would you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for finishing that. Uh, <laughs> what the heck is this? The man who killed Hitler and then the Bigfoot. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly how it sounds, George. <laughs> mm-hmm. When I was looking through movies, I not like when I was doing the notes for today, but like bef- like a week ago, I was looking through movies that were coming out in February. I was like, what's coming up besides Elite Battle Angel? So I could... <laughs> Plot my schedule around it's that. It's kind of nice, honestly, and I, it's been so slow. Because yeah. you're like, ah, oh, just hang out. <laughs> yeah, I, I have plenty of time to watch Polar Destroyed Back to the <laughs> Three more times. Yeah, a few more. Oh. Uh, eight more likely. Beautiful. Oh. It was sexy. It's all oh, bad. You see all of his ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, it's pretty much how it sounds. It's a man, he killed Hitler in the past. Is this the Terry Gilliam movie? Probably. No, 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 no. Okay. The... I, when I saw it on the list, I thought it was the Terry Gilliam movie, which is called The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. Oh, that's okay. But basically, yeah, this, this, is, this is the man, like he, he killed Hitler in the past, and now they're like, we need you for one more job, and the job is apparently Bigfoot. So, like, it, who knows what could happen. Do you know if this is, like, a major release or a no, small? No, it's not. Is this the movie you saw I on saw, a list? And I like, saw this a, is a movie I saw on a list, and I was like, this I is I saw a poster it. for it at the Alamo. So oh, okay. When I went to see Glass. So it's so um, big enough to have a poster there. It will play there, probably. So probably one someday. day, yeah. and we will see it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, George, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand you the podium. Yeah, so this movie here has been delayed for a year. Uh, it was originally supposed to come out this time last year. Uh, so this is Fighting with My Family, directed and written by Stephen Merchant, I believe his name is. Yes. Produced by the Dwayne uh, Johnson himself. Produced by Dwayne Johnson, uh, known as The Rock in some business, as in the <laughs> business. <laughs> This is the story of Soraya Bevis, also known as Sarah Knight, also known as the first ever WWE NXT Women's Champion, Paige. Jordan, uh, I'll be honest, it feels like you're speaking another language to me. Uh, so that, that was her gimmick name, brother. 
Uh, anyways, so this is the story still of still wrestler WWE wrestler Paige. Uh, she's a so her story is that she's been wrestling since she was thirteen. She's grown up in a family of wrestlers, been wrestling pretty much her entire life. And this is a movie based on how she, her family, uh, and how she got to the WWE. It's a weird, I don't know, like it's a weird, mm, like on paper it doesn't sound that interesting compared to every other wrestler. Like, mm-hmm. uh, but I guess since it's Paige, like out of like all of, like the modern like female wrestlers, like women's wrestling is the thing right now in WWE. Um, yeah, this is her story. It's certainly for a person who's like 26 years old, a year older than me. Her life has certainly had some twists and turns. Uh, I'm not going to spoil what's her, what's currently happening in her life and how this movie ends. You could end it in multiple ways. There's a lot of stuff that happens in life. And you could have it be at the end. Um, but yeah, this is a movie. This is, this is about a real person. This is about a okay. real person. I thought this was just No, like, no, 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 no. This looks like, like a, a family, just like random... Yeah, yeah. it's it sounds yeah sitcom sure it totally movie. looks like burr, 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 burr. And even some of them generic but like, I wanted to be the wrestler <laughs> no this is a very real story okay. so uh, this is like a film adaptation of a wrestling story arc. this is like a by well not a story arc like well, per, per, it's like a it's a movie adaptation of a biopic see you confused when i watch wrestling that's like, true what's real? what what's, what's that? it get what's it work is it a shoot brother it's a work shoot what's going on uh no this is shooting from the hit brother straight straight shoot um but yeah what the fuck is he saying i don't know <laughs> uh, i'm sure there'll be a dumb nod. montage where like vince vaughn is like a shoot is a gimmick is a a gig is bleh. anyways uh so yeah so for me like ryan set it up like oh this is george wrestling time but the thing is Paige became a star in WWE at a weird point, like after it was really bad, and I left. So this is the point. What this movie's probably gonna be about is like this wrestler, but also she came at a point where the company was like, you know, maybe we should give the women actually a shot. Maybe we should not put them in like pillow fights and shit. Uh, maybe we should give them more than two minutes on the on the on the TV. Now you're speaking a crazy language. Maybe now. we shouldn't put a butterfly on their the wrestling belt. Uh. <laughs> I don't know though. I don't know though. Um, so yeah, so Paige, that's sort of what this movie's about. Like the angle is like her family is crazy. She likes wrestling. It's a yeah. The the only thing that's weird about this movie for me, it's like why her story other than like her family was in this. I don't know. Anyways, The Rock is making it. He's producing it. I don't know how well it'll do. It's coming out before Mania. Women's wrestling's big right now. I don't know. I'm excited to see it. Uh. I don't know jack shit about the character Paige, though. I can't tell you anything about her. She screams. That's her big thing. Oh. Hmm. Anyways, that's February. It certainly is. The most we're excited, the most we talked about a movie here was a movie about wrestling, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm exci- I am still excited for the Lego movie, too. I don't know if we'll get Arctic in our area, just because I think mm, it is a limited thing. Probably. But. I would see it. <laughs> mm. I'm committed to the bit of loving Mads Mikkelsen. I hope I, I yeah, hope the Lego I'm movie glad. too. Like, like it. I actually, I'll, I'll probably watch it, and I hope I'll enjoy it. It's just, it just really does feel like a lifetime ago since the Lego movie one. Yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah. Oh, and like the bit is like Chris Pratt's like. There's like the sort of alter like yeah, cool it, guy Chris Pratt. It's I'm all, it's all of his movie characters yeah. from. Uh, Guardians because that was the year like he had like oh this guy's a big deal was yeah it, yeah. it was like that came out he was just the voice of the character and then like that Jurassic scene, and then Jurassic World and, and, the and he was like whoa this guy's an action star now that's yeah. crazy we we hired him because he used Joe Everyman for Parks and Rec but now he's the action boy some would say he peaked at that role as yeah that. some would say Andy Dwyer Andy Dwyer yes that's his name Andy Dwyer um so yeah um. That's February. Honestly, it feels like we're sort of again like we were last year. Where, like it's gonna be a minute till shit starts kicking yeah. up. Um, is Captain Marvel Captain in Marvel. March? March eighth. We should probably buy those tickets. Huh? I didn't even think about oh, that. Oh boy, baby boy. Um. So yeah. Uh. But we will have our best of. So while February, there's not a whole lot, and Ryan and Carrie will have to maybe watch a wrestling movie with me. <laughs> oh God, where's, where's the gun? <laughs> 
and Alita Battle Angel. Oh, oh, yeah. Really oh, excited boy. for this lineup. I, oh, <laughs> what bullet am I going to bite? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is our best of discussion. So, Ryan, where can people find... Well, I, you have a new Twitter, actually. Yes. You're repping a brand. Yes. You rem- you've been... Uh, <laughs> You've been sort of you're part of sponsored. the Coca-Cola family of products yes. now. At Mr. Pin Official is my new Twitter handle. Um, so yeah, if you you're... heard it at first, Mr. Pin Official. If you have any exciting, uh, you know, thoughts or feelings on Pib, you can send that to Ryan. Exclusively that. No movie themes, just about Pib, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also make sure he's tagging all of his tweets with hashtag sponsored, hashtag ad, keeping him honest. <laughs> Carrie, oh, man, you got me already. <laughs> Carrie, where can people find you? Find me at car, K-A-R underscore E, Lyles, L-Y-L-E-S, on Twitter.com. Uh-huh. And you can find me at jcruzalvarez26. I'm excited to debate about movies in a ranked order uh, in a subjective and honest fashion. For science. For science. Scientifically proven list. <laughs> Let's be talk a bit Oh, oh yeah. God, I thought about that recently. Anyways, we all did. Until then, we will see you next time.